and other parts of the world too. But epidemic. So many people are lonely to the point where they feel almost paralyzed about making any changes in their life. Um, we probably wouldn't even tell other people. It's just it becomes like this way of being. And so this article is all about what can doctors do besides giving them pills. And pills and medications have helped many people enormously. But oftentimes there are certain changes we can make so that we can do it without having to be um, heavily medicated. So loneliness um, can lead and also have symptoms of the same thing, right? Feeling um, lack of self-esteem, lack of courage, um, not wanting to connect with people. And here I am on this show connecting with you, connecting to the world. It's one of the things that's, that's helped me. So there's an event on July 30th at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn sponsored by Philip Lim, the fashion designer, and also the Brooklyn Nets basketball team. And it's from 4 to 7, and it's a free event addressing mental illness, a word that many of us cringe, we don't even talk about. Um, many, many families for generations would not ever, ever consider getting help, help, therapy, counseling, just reaching out for some help other than medicating themselves, again, with prescription pills or even substances. So I'm, I'm addressing something that has meant a lot to me because 33 years ago, I got help because I got severely depressed right after I got engaged to be married. I mean, really depressed like it was not normal. And so I sought help, and through help, I ended up um, being told that I had an allergy to alcohol. And, you know, I wasn't drinking every day, but my wonderful therapist was able to pinpoint that how I was thinking and behaving about life, not even able to embrace my talents and skills, and this incredible new husband that I just, you know, married. Um, so I quit alcohol 33 years ago. Did it affect my mental uh, thoughts and beings? Absolutely. I was depressed a lot, even though I had so much to be grateful for, right? So mental illness is, the, you know, what I'm really called by the angels today to talk about, and my guardian angel, is that when we can address this without having the stigmatism, we can open up a conversation of not being okay. Look how many big events in the world that are not great are often pinpointed to somebody's mental health. And we always point the finger over there. And so they end up doing pretty drastic things. But we might just sabotage our whole life. We may end up just sabotaging our life, not getting some coaching, not getting some help so that we can break through our fears. And that's an issue of mental health. And so I wanted to bring that up today because the I here I am talking about angels, not because of any other reason than I I sought help, I got better, I became happy, I became not depressed, I became open to even more messages of feeling good and even more messages of feeling light and e have ease and manifesting and all of that. And and I will be 70 next February, and I feel that I'm still in a high level of creating my life. And, you know, I just want to share that. It's all connected, connecting with our guides and angels and also addressing who we are, how do we feel, how do we feel about who we, about ourselves, and how do we feel about connecting to life, to our community. So here's an event that, again, is on July 30th. It might be live streamed, so if you're not in Brooklyn on that day, which is, I'm telling you, it's free. The first 200 people get a free book by Dr. Jenny Wang called Permission to, to Come Home or to be, to be Me. I apologize. I don't have it right in front of me. But anyway, we all at some level, some point in our lives, or know someone who's having a little bit of a hard time. And, you know, a little bit of hard time might just be not participating in life, not participating in life, hiding behind the computer, devices, work, you know. So it's something near and dear to my heart because I broke the tradition in my family. No one in my family has gotten help, not that I know of. And it made a huge difference for me. Instead of succumbing to just drowning my emotions with beer and wine, um, 
And again, it wasn't even every day, but I didn't have any a facility to talk about life when it wasn't okay because it just wasn't something we did in our family. And so I'm guided by my guardian angels and angels to to promote everyone. It's one of the cards even for this week is to get help. Get help if you've been suffering and struggling more than, especially if you've been struggling for five years. And, you know, one one of the things I learned was that my therapist had said, how good do you want to feel? And I thought, what a question. Nobody ever asked me that. How good do you want to feel? It was like right, you feel better or you feel worse, right? But how good do you want to feel? And that has stayed with me forever because I I had known her for even even 40 years, right, before I got sober. But this wonderful question is how good do you want to feel? And that's one of the things can that can continue to expand when you work with your angels, but many people need to take time out and look at their lives, which includes looking at their past and being able to put the past where it belongs in the past and not have it be their story of who they are, right? So how many people, you know, you go up to them and you ask them a question, they'll say, oh, uh, this is happening, but it's because this, 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 my mother did this, my mother said this, and my father did that. And you're like, oh, okay. So many of us think who we are is something from the past. Did it shape us? Probably did. Do we have a possibility and option to change? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we are not our stories. 